Hi, I'm Tony Fowle. Uh, this is uh, just one video in a series of tutorial videos showing uh, how to use my uh, motorcycle setup software, uh, which you can see more details of on my website at uh, www.tonyfowle.com. This software allows us to analyze the various characteristics of front forks. As usual, we've got uh, data entry uh, boxes here on the left. There's only three pieces of data we actually need to add in. Uh, one is the rake angle, which has uh, come across from the previous data on, that has been entered on other screens, or if this is our first time into it, uh, possibly just the default data. Here we have the spring rate in the forks, and the maximum movement. Now the data that we enter in here is for a single fork leg only simply because that's how we're likely to measure the data. On the other hand the graph of the force versus the fork movement that we see on the right hand side is giving us the values for both legs for the whole fork assembly which is what we the information that we actually want. A additional uh, data that's optional that we can add in we can add in a fork um, preload. Uh, let's just make uh, for a test do that as uh, 10 millimeters and let's refresh the graph and we can see what's happened. It's lifted the starting value up okay due to the preload. Uh, here we can enter in uh, top out the data for top out springs if we're using any we can put in the spring rate and the top out spring contact is the distance away from full extension when the top out spring comes into play. Here we can enter in details about the volume of air remaining in the forks after the oil has been added. Um, say for instance we have a fork leg diameter of 43 millimeters. The extended air volume means the volume above the oil level when the forks are fully extended. Uh, let's put in a value of say 190 in here. We can refresh the graph and we see what effect that has on the force versus displacement relationship. Uh, we can tune the um, progressive action or the force at the end of the fork movement quite a lot just by changing that uh, the oil volume that we put in which naturally changes the residual air volume. The problem with using um, the, the air left in the forks um, to add to our fork force is that this addition is very dependent on temperature, okay, as, as any uh, gas under pressure is. Uh, it in so sometimes it's been quite popular to actually pre-pressurize uh, the, the forks and here if that's the case we can enter in, in how many bars of pre-pressurization we have, say we have pressurization of one bar, we can refresh the graph and see the effect that that has. Okay, it puts up our maximum fork force and also has the same effect as some preload that we can see down here. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, in this particular example so far, uh, we've been looking at the spring rate, using a spring rate as a constant rate. Uh, the software is actually more flexible than that and we can enter in any spring data that we like. Here in this particular case we've just got uh, an example of a constant rate spring. We can enter in any displacement uh, steps here over the full range from zero to maximum compression of the spring in the forks and the force at those compressions. This is just a, a linear one. Uh, but we can put in whatever values uh, to represent either uh, a strictly dual rate spring which has uh, been used in quite a lot of front forks or a truly progressive one. Uh, we can save uh, the spring data that we've added in simply by clicking on this button but now it warns us that we need to put in a description and reference. Let's just call that a test and uh, the reference is just a three digit code, it can be either letters or numbers, it's purely there so that you can select uh, it out of um, a list later on when you come 
back to it. So it's probably best to give it some reference that means something to a particular model you're analysing. In this case, I, I'll call it 12K. OK. Um, so now I save the spring and the data save. That's all there is to it. Uh, let's see what happens if we load a previously saved spring. Here we've got a list of the springs that we saved. This is the one that we've just uh, saved a few seconds ago. In this case, let's pick a dual rate uh, spring. OK, we've got two rates, starting rate of 14, a finishing rate of 24, which has been put in here in our case notes. OK, we double click on that and it tells us that spring's loaded. If we come back to the fork screen here, let's select that we want to use that custom spring. Oh, well, first of all, let's plot the spring. We can see that it is a two-rate spring. The curve in blue represents a second-order polynomial fit to that. Now, this is useful if um, we've got a truly progressive spring and we enter in some um, measured values which are likely to have a certain amount of scatter on them, then uh, this, this line will find the best fit through uh, that data and in many cases we prefer to use the smooth curve in which case we tick on this tick box here but in this particular case where we've got a genuine double rate spring the last thing we'd want is to actually use the smooth value because it's uh, obviously departing from uh, the, the, the true nature of the spring so we'll leave this unticked in this case and we'll tick use the custom spring so now when we go back into the front fork screen we can see the effect that the dual rate spring has had okay we previously just had a smooth step here until we got into the region where the gas pressure was having an effect but let's just get rid of the gas pressure effect and we can probably better see the effect of the dual rate spring well, that's it for now. Uh, to make sure that you don't miss any uh, more of these tutorial videos on the motorcycle setup software, I suggest that you tick the like button on this one and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Motor Chassis. Uh, for more information about the suspension setup software and uh, my book on chassis design, I suggest you visit my website at uh, www.tonyfoll.com. Thanks for watching.